Okay, so I got a student request um, asking for help with the KF and KB equations um, for this homework assignment. And so what I'm going to do is take a few minutes and give you a little bit of an old-fashioned lecture. All right, so when we, see, um, when we see questions like this, we've got some terms here, KF and KB. We're going to be invoking some old terms that we had. And I, let me apologize at the outset for the background noise. I'm sitting here in my kitchen and uh, my family is working around me. So, um, and it, so you're gonna hear some, some of that. So the KF and KB equations, right? So we're gonna, we need some background terms. These are terms which you have learned recently, but, um, but it would be natural, I think, normal to not be comfortable with those terms. So let's go back and look at a couple of these terms. First of all, we need molality. When we look at the equation, we're gonna see a, a lowercase m it's, it's uh, italicized, and so I'm underlining it to show it's italicized. And that lowercase m stands for molality. Now, we don't use molality nearly as much as we use molarity, so I'm putting these two next to each other. Molality is moles of solute for a kilogram of solvent, okay? That might be, for example, um, the, let's say, salt that we dissolved in the water. Okay, that would be a good way to think of that. Salt dissolved in water, right? Solute is what's dissolved in it, and the solvent is what's dissolving it, okay? So when we're reading these questions, we're gonna have to find the solute and find how many moles we have of the solute, and we're gonna have to find the solvent and find how many kilograms of solvent we have, right? So we need this, we need molar molality for these equations. Now, we don't need molarity, but I'm putting it here because we use this so much that you might get it confused. And I think sometimes when you get something confused, it's good to look at the two next to each other and compare them, okay? So in molarity, which is much more common, we use moles of solute, right? And we dissolve this in, or this is in liters of I'm having trouble spelling you today. Solution, solute and solution, right? And so in molality, we're doing kilograms of solvent. In molarity, we're doing liters of solution, okay? And so if we're talking about salt water, what's the solute? The solute is salt. And what's the solvent, or rather, what's the solution? It's called salt water or brine or, or something else, okay? So do you see the difference between these two? Um, as you've heard me say many times, I think the best way to appreciate these differences is just to use them a lot, right? And we get used to them, okay? So molality is what we're using here. We're not using molarity, but um, which is an uppercase M, and it's usually italicized, right? That's why I underline it. Okay, so you need to draw these, these words out, draw the symbols out, draw the units out, and that's the best way to get used to them, okay? So let's, let's review now. When a solute is dissolved in a solvent, together we call them what? Say it out loud. Together we call them a solution, right? And so this might be the salt. Salt might be dissolved in water, and together we call it salt water, right? All right, so watch out for that. We need those terms here. And let's move on and do a, a little more uh, review, okay? So we, I'm gonna, we're gonna say again. Do I have? Uh, no, I gotta, I gotta do this. If we put a solute in a solvent, we might say that the, I didn't leave myself enough room here. Freezing point of the solvent will go down, okay? And we remember that by saying, I remember that by just saying out loud, the freezing point depression, right? We know that the freezing point gets depressed. It turns out that the boiling point, you can see if you look below, I've got a couple notes down there. Man, my handwriting is terrible today. 
Let me get rid of this. The boiling <coughs> point. If you put a solute in a solvent, the boiling point of the solvent will go up, right? And I remember that by, by uh, saying boiling point elevation, okay? So however you're gonna remember these two terms over here, I suggest that, that you, you go to the trouble to do it, however you do it. Turns out that freezing points go down, boiling points go up, and that's what we're gonna do, okay? Now remember now, the freezing point's gonna go down when we, when we put a solute in the solvent. That is the freezing point of the solvent will go down. So let me go back to my yellow thing earlier. If we put salt in water, then the freezing point of the water will go down. Okay, if we put salt in water, the boiling point of the water will go up, right? And that means that, it, that if we put salt in water, that means that instead of freezing at zero degrees Celsius, it's gonna freeze at something below zero degrees Celsius, depending on how much we put, it, put in, right? And so that takes us to the, next, uh, to the next picture. So this is all review, right? So how much does the freezing point go down? Aha, this is where we are now. The freezing point goes down and we're gonna call the freezing point depression. Let me go back to black now. Here's the freezing point depression. How much is it gonna go down? It's gonna go down by some constant, which we look up, times the molality, which I'm gonna underline because it's, I think, italicized, all right? So this is Kf. It's just a number that we look up or we're given in the question stem, times the molality, all right? Okay, so what we're gonna have to do uh, when we get these questions is we're either going to have to figure out KF if we're given molality and change in temperature or we're going to have to figure out change in temperature if we're given these two or whatever, right? You've done you've done problems like this before. Um, before we dive into that though, let me do say something about T about delta T and molality. These are things that you sort of know from other places. So delta T is simply going to be the change in temperature, which is T2 minus T1. So T2 is going to be the temperature, the melting point with the solute, right? And this is the melting point or the freezing point that's pure without it, right? So this is what we looked this up in a book and this is the stuff with the, the solution, okay? That's just, T, that's just what delta T is. And then molality, we reviewed this at the beginning of this uh, video and that's the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, okay? Now, we're not always given moles, right? Sometimes we're given mass. In which case, we're going to convert to moles. So you've done that many times, but that does complicate the process. So let's, let's do a problem now together. I'm going to come over here. got to get rid of this. Come over here. And let's look at a problem, okay? So a certain substance X has a normal freezing point. So it looks like this is the sol vent, okay? Has a normal freezing point of 6.7 degrees Celsius. Let's go back over here. So TM or TF, sorry, freezing point, I think is what we're, we're doing this. 6.7 degrees Celsius, right? Oh, um, yeah, so let's go back over here. I'm oh, sorry. 6.7 and a mole of freezing point depression of 5.31. Mole of freezing point depression of 5.31. Okay. And I think that's degrees Celsius per mole per kilogram. Okay. What else did they give us? Calculate the freezing point of a solution made of 20 grams of urea. Okay, so yeah, indeed, we're given the mass in grams of urea. Was it 20.12? Is that what it was? Yep, 20.12 grams of urea. And so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to calculate the moles of urea. 
And we're going to do that the way we've done it many times, the formula weight of urea. We've got to calculate that. Let's come over here and get our calculator. Boom. Okay, so it looks like urea is right there. Okay. So it looks like there's two nitrogens in it. Two times nitrogen plus, it looks like there's four hydrogens, four times hydrogen, plus, looks like there's one carbon, boom, plus only one oxygen, boom, equals. Okay, so it's 60.055 store. That's the formula weight of urea. Let's get rid of that. Formula weight of urea is 60.055. And so the moles of urea, that's the solute, right, is going to be 20.12 20, 20 divided by 60, okay, and that's going to give it one third, right, because 20 divided by 60 is one third. So let's think about that before we do it, make sure it makes sense. Twenty point one two divided by 60 is equal to 0.335. Yep, perfect, one third, 0.335. So let's go back over here, 0 0.335 moles of urea, and hopefully they give us the mass of the, the kilograms of the solvent, okay? Mass in kilograms of the solvent. All right, so let's go back over here. Yep, dissolved in 450 grams of solvent. 450 grams is gonna equal to 0 0.450, right? So the molality, right, careful now, I see all these M's here, is equal to the moles per kilogram. That would be the, that's this one right here, right? The moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of solvent. So let's come back over here and say it was 0.335. Did I store that? I did. Divided by 0 0.450, 0 0.450 equals, and that's the molality. So I'm gonna store that equals, gosh, I forgot what that number was already, 0.7445. Zero point seven four four five. Okay, and so I've got the K, and I've got M. So let's solve for delta T is equal to K is five point three one. And I've been really careful with my units, so I'm not going to write all the units out here. Times molality. Zero point seven four four five. Right is equal to, and let's calculate that on our Alex calculator. There's my 0.7445, did I store that already? Yep, times 5.31 equals 3.953. That's my change in temperature, right? Let's go over here, 3.953. Nine five three degrees Celsius. Okay, now I know what my freezing point actually is at six point seven. So if my if it if it goes down by three point nine five three, it's going to be my uh, my T two is going to equal to six point seven minus three point nine five something. Right? Okay, six point. So, did I store that? Nope. Store, clear, 6.7 minus that equals 2.746. And I'm going to two sig figs, it looks like right here, okay? So I'm going to say, this, I can see this is 2.7. 2.7 is my temperature. Now, before I hit enter, because um, it's so frustrating if you get this wrong. I'm going to say, does this make sense, okay? We know that we, when we put a solute in a 
solution, or rather in a solvent, it makes the freezing point go down because it's called freezing point depression, right? Freezing point depression. So the, the stuff with it must have a lower freezing point than the pure stuff, right? Certain substance X, X has a normal freezing point of 6.7. And indeed, 2.7 is lower than 6.7. Okay, so that does make sense, and uh, I'm going to, and, before, and I'm going to hit check. We'll get some green. I'm going to go and say one more, fun, one more thing about that. Okay, so indeed it is 2.7. Got some green. Love that. And before I close out this video, I'm going to make one more point, and that is that I didn't put a minus here. I did not, because I just memorized that it's a freezing point depression. It goes down. So that was what that was about. Now, Alex puts a, puts a minus here, and you'll see that if I put a minus here, it's, it's, um, we're going to get a similar uh, issue. But I guess what I'm going to say here is that I always forget that that's minus or plus. What I do instead of putting a minus or a plus there is I say to myself, does it go down or up? And I know by the question, Sam, it's a freezing point depression, so it must go down. All right? Um, yeah, so let me say nothing else about that. If you've got questions after you've done this, uh, then you, that might be the issue here. Did you have to memorize that that goes, has a minus there, or do you just remember that it goes, goes down? Okay, all right, hope that's helpful. We'll talk more about it on Monday.